What's going on guys? Today we're going to be comparing the Samsung Q90R to the LG OLED E8. Now I am feeling a little under the weather, so if I sound a little low for energy, do bear in mind that I do have nerve damage and I am still trying to make it through these videos, so please definitely don't be too harsh about my lack of enthusiasm or something like that because I am doing the best I can for you guys. This video has been a highly requested topic, so I've been really trying to get myself together to put it out for you guys. So smack a like on this video for that. And with that, let's get started. Now, the first things that you can notice when you look at these two televisions is that you have the Q90R exhibit some pretty decent natural tones. I find that it does a good job as far as giving you a decent color palette. However, compared to the OLED, it definitely is getting beaten quite a bit. And that OLED is exhibiting obviously stronger shadows and vibrancy behind colors. Now, it's to be noted that OLED will not have a 100% color accurate you know, picture. Neither will the Q90R because again, anytime you're taking a recording or picture of a camera, or rather of a television, and using a camera to do that, it's, some things are going to go amiss. But needless to say, they, they do look pretty decent and a lot closer than what a video would offer you. So that's why I'm doing it like this here. In this particular image, they at first glance are pretty identical. However, you can notice a couple differences. One of the biggest is the obvious amount of shadow detail the Samsung Q90R has over the LG OLED E8. Now, when you look at the E8, the E8 is exhibiting far more shades of color and things like the background, you know, junk in the back. And, you know, you've got the weights. They have far more darkness and richness to them, shadows around Deku's face. You're able to notice all of these details. I mean, it's just incredible. It really was a sight to see. Where Samsung is a more muted, more diluted image, and not to say that that's particularly bad for some people, but I do prefer the look of the E8 for this particular scene. Now, in this particular image, they became very difficult to tell the difference apart. You have to really sit there and pay attention to these photos because at first glance, they do look extremely similar. And I think this is a real big testament to the fact that, you know, QLEDs are catching up to OLEDs, and most definitely as far as color reproduction and renditions of images. But when you look closer, you can notice things like the hair being darker, the shade of green being richer, the blue I actually find better on the Q90R. But you can notice that the yellow in the backpack, the skin tonality on OLED, all that's more natural and more realistic. So I find that overall the E8 is doing a better job than the Q90R. And when we look at images like this, it kind of takes a complete and total flip-flop. Now this is gonna look entirely overly red on the E8 because again, cameras don't exactly represent red, especially 100% accurate. But what you can see is when you get to that particular color, it was having some difficulty. Now for those that don't know, red has always been a problem color for LG OLED in particular. And this still remains true to this day and they have a very difficult time representing that color accurately. The Q90R, on the other hand, did a great job of separating those colors and gradating it out finely and everything fell in place where it was supposed to. However, I find that that is the only place that the Q90R did take the advantage. Things like the smoke in the back, the yellow on the buildings, the shadows in the buildings, Deku, Deku's hair, uh, the shadows coming down on Deku's forehead, all of that appeared far more vibrant and rich th than like what you'd get on the Samsung Q90R. Now. A special note here, both TVs have been professionally calibrated by myself, and so I'm just simply going over what I'm noticing, so if you feel like maybe it's something to do with the settings, maybe it, they're not calibrated or something like that, rest assured both have been calibrated, it's just one is just higher with dynamic range. Now a special note, anytime you have a really high dynamic range that exceeds the normal threshold, a regular camera won't be able to capture all of the changes in color and cover the entire color spectrum that you have on OLED. And unfortunately, Samsung this year doesn't have the highest color spectrum, so it's far easier to capture Samsung imagery this year than what you get on OLED. Now looking at images like this, it's a total win for the Q90R. The Q90R is exhibiting far more vibrancy, depth of field, richness to the image, sharpness. It was just an amazing showing for the Q90R. However, when you look at the E8, the E8 has an, a more natural tonality as far as shades of color. So you're actually, instead of just getting one flat tone of blue, you're actually getting 
like the lightness between All Might's skin and the different colors and shades of blue, it, more variation to the colors, I would say. And that really gives you an immersion that you just don't see anywhere else. Now, I would say though, it's ultimately a win for the Q90R because it's brighter and it's holding a more immersive picture that draws you in. And when we're talking about imagery, that's ultimately what it's all about. Now, when we go to this scene, the LG E8 does take the win because unfortunately the Samsung Q90R is just too diluted in this particular scene. While at first glance or to some, it might appear as though it was natural from where I was sitting on the end, watching it directly in front, I'm telling you, there is a massive difference between what OLED was doing for these scenes and what you were getting on the Q90R. And namely, that's the richness of the color. I mean, just check out the depth and the richness and the windows and the building, and you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. Again, these are not going to be 100% real world representations, but I am going to point out what I can. Now, a special note, the Q90R did do a better job of representing the color blue, ridiculously more amounts of the vibrancy behind that blue than what you're going to get on the OLED. But I would say that it's not necessarily a color accurate representation of blue. So maybe that's something that a couple of sticklers might have a problem with. Now, when we look at this image, there is a disparaging difference between the two image qualities. And I will just point out that this is not what it actually looks like in person. Her hair was actually brown, not red, but for whatever reason, my camera picked up her hair, her hair on OLED red. So don't really know what's going on there. Maybe it has something to do with the WRGB type panel. I don't know. But needless to say, her hair was this really rich brown. Instead of red, just imagine brown. I know it sounds crazy, but that's what it actually looked like in person. So that's what I'm going to convey to you guys. Now, that being said, the entire imagery was just dramatically more three-dimensional, popping and shocking on the E8, where the Q90R, not terrible, but it definitely looked like a TV from a couple of years ago and that it didn't have that punch and that sting that you would expect, especially from a $3,700 TV after taxes when I first purchased this television. Now, when we look at this initial image of the Q90R, you can see that both do a good job with brightness. And that's really shocking for a lot of people who think that OLED is always going to be dim no matter what, because you can clearly see that OLED is hanging in there with a top end Q90R and the brightness levels are very, very similar. I mean, really, for this particular scene, both had to be at at least five to six hundred nits. So I can safely say that it was a really, really nice scene to show off OLED and its capabilities. As you can see, Deku powering up his punch, getting ready to strike. You can see tons and tons of detail in the fist on the LG OLED E8. Just an absolutely spectacular array of color, brightness, contrast, everything. It was just really amazing, and I do prefer the OLED for this. However, a special strength to the Q90R, if you look, you can see more shades of blue. Now, this is a big deal for those who like, again, more color, and that's the whole thing behind QLED and the 100% color volume thing. However, for me, in a scene like this, when things are moving so fast, I wouldn't necessarily notice that as readily as I would Deku charging up. And unfortunately, the Q90R with his lack of contrast this year has definitely taken a turn for the worse And that you can notice next to the OLED, you have virtually no detail in the actual power that Deku is wielding here. And you don't see any of the, the, the lightning going out and coursing through the veins. I mean, it's just... You, you see a world of difference on the LG OLED E8 that the Q90R just cannot and did not produce. Now, in this particular scene, it's a total domination by the Q90R. The Q90R absolutely slays OLED to no end because OLED is black crushing this scene. For those unfamiliar, black crushing occurs anytime you have near black or things that should typically be dark or perceived as dark. But the problem is OLED takes any image, any general image that has an excess amount of really dark elements and tends to crush them down. The Q90R maintains perfect shadow detail, opening the scene up to a ridiculously wonderful degree. And I will though have to say that this does come in part as a trade-off with their lack of contrast this year. So this year, Samsung opts to have more shadow detail in turn for worse black levels where you can run into some blooming and some scenes that are pretty terrible. This is the trade-off though. You do get excellent shadow detail and you're seeing that here. You see every little fine detail. We're on the OLED, not so much. It's definitely a significantly darker image. 
Now in this image, I find that both are pretty comparable to one another, but it is the OLED that's giving you that depth. Now, when I talk about depth, I'm talking about the isolation of a subject, that three dimensionality to notice, you know, Uraka from that building in the back and to create her as her own three dimensional entity. That's the big idea behind depth and dimensionality. And the E8 is doing that to a superb degree where the Q90R is rendering her a lot more flat and a lot more baselined and washing out the color palette to a massive degree. It won't look like it again in these images. It'll look like OLED's just really, really red. But again, that's, I don't know why my camera just picked it up that way. I'm telling you her hair was this rich, like chestnut brown, very rich color. And it was just unbelievably vivid and vibrant. Though I will say I did prefer the look of the sand or rather the warmth of the sand on the Q90R versus the OLED where the OLED was just a little bit a little bit grayer, I guess, by comparison. But either way, both images look good, but if you ask my personal opinion, I would go for the E8. Now, in this particular image, the LG OLED E8 does come through again with an awesome victory because it's rendering things like that statue behind Uraka in a three-dimensional fashion along with the foliage. If you pay very close attention, this is where OLED is striking back and giving you its demanding presence, right? It's saying, look, I am OLED, this is what I do. And you're seeing those pixels turn off in, like correctly and doing the job right like you look at the foliage you can notice that the plants actually look to have three dimensionality to them like foliage would we're on the Q90R it's just a flat image now granted this is a flashback and everything and it's supposed to have that hazy fuzzy kind of look to it however I feel like the Samsung is taking extra liberties to wash out the picture on an unnecessary scale I mean her scarf was just completely washed out we're on the LG OLED E8 I mean you got her cheeks showing up, you've got her scarf. We're on the QLED, her cheeks don't even show up at all. You don't see the, the rosiness to her cheeks literally at all, it just didn't happen. Now, I found that to be very strange, but you know, say la vie, some things I guess you sacrifice to get that excellent shadow detail, which the Q90R slaughters OLED at. When you look at things like Uraka's jacket, you can see every line and indentation in that jacket where the OLED is just dark. So there are things that I guess both sides will have to decide on if you're looking between these two TVs. Now, when we look at images like this, it is a total domination for the Q90R. The Q90R, because it opens up shadow detail to a massive degree, is able to show not only the bright highlights of the building in the back, but it's also able to render Deku correctly where you can see his facial expression of pure anguish and you can see the highlights in the eyes, the jacket, the tracksuit, whatever you want to call it, all coming in very clearly along with seeing all the detail in his hair. Go over to OLED and the only thing you see clearly is the building. Now, albeit the building looks absolutely incredible and far better than what you're going to get on the Q90R. However, OLED is darkening way too much of the image. You're missing key information. The jacket, for example, it's dark. It's not even the right shade of blue. Deku has no detail in his hair whatsoever, especially on my end when I was looking at this in person. It really felt like, you know, they were really trying to engulf him in shadow more on the OLED, where on the Q90R, you were just seeing more of the image. Now, I don't know the director personally, I can't call him up and ask him which version was he actually trying to create, so I don't know the director's intent. All I can tell you is what looked more pleasing to me was the look of the Q90R. Now, when we look at the Q90R on this side of things, I also prefer the look of the Q90R here. While the OLED did have a richer shade of color, and again, her hair, no, is not red, it was definitely not as pleasing as the Q90R was. Take, for example, the rock on top of Uraka's legs. You can see far more shades of color and detail in those rocks. Also, the texture of the ground had significantly more detail all over. The sharpness is through the roof. I mean, it was unbelievable. We're on OLED, it's uh, more blurry, more flatter image you didn't really have that texture and that that fineness to it which is shocking considering oled prides itself on that type of thing but the q90r definitely came through and delivered an excellent performance there albeit i do prefer the look of oled because oled was definitely slaying the q90r when we're talking about color and all that stuff it looked better like from a color perspective as far as vivid uh the vivid nature of it and the vibrancy but 
the overall image was better on the Q90R. Now, when we're looking at this image, this is going to be a bit of a tie. And the reason being is because if you look at the big smokestack in the back, you can see that the Q90R is dominating with the warmth. And that looks like a real nice warm tone that you'd find in a, a post explosion or at least rock falling or whatever you want to call it. Now, when you look at Deku's hair, though, this is where it kind of goes to OLED because you can see that he has not only the natural shade of green, but then it slides off into these rich shadows that cast over his neck. And the Q90R doesn't necessarily have as intense of the shadows. Though the Q90R, in my opinion, has a better shade of blue. And then when you look at the better and richer detail that you can find on the ground, like the gravel parts, you can notice every little individual strand of gravel wear on the OLED. You don't see that. Also, this is going to be a really difficult detail to spot, but if you can see the building and the back behind Deku, there's this long little pillar that's kind of greenish, where on OLED, it just kind of appears like a more flat blue color. So they're definitely separating colors more realistically, I would say, on the Samsung Q90R in this particular scene, where OLED not really doing it justice. Now, in this particular scene, it was domination by OLED all day, every day. You can't even bat an eye at it. Not only were the shadows on point and really, really rich and dark and, and just punchy, but that skyline was gradating in a shades of red and orange that the QLED just was not touching at all. So this is where I kind of feel like the Q90R kind of took its little step backwards this year as far as color saturation, because when you look at really strong imagery like this, it's supposed to be bright and punchy and I want to just draw your attention to how much brighter the OLED is looking by the way than what you're getting on the Q90R. It, needless to say the Q90R is nowhere near as bright as a lot of people are claiming that it is. It's trust me not a very bright TV at all and definitely far dimmer than the Samsung Q8FN. I just want to throw that out for those who are wondering. It's like I would say just barely touching 1600 nits on occasion and like probably sitting more around the 800-ish nits on average, because really, it was very comparable to the LG E8's performance, like in a lot of key areas and in a lot of scenes. But it's that three-dimensionality behind the clouds where you can identify the clouds as actual figures where the Q90R just doesn't have that. And not only that, but just the overall color palette better on OLED. So this is a win for OLED here. Now, when we look at this particular image, I say overall, I like the look of the Q90R, but OLED is rendering a lot of things correctly, so it's going to end up being a tie, I would say, because if you look at the sky in the back, I like that you have so many different shades of blue in the sky on the Q90R. However, I don't like that the colors are just way washed out from what the show is supposed to look like, where on OLED, you do have the vibrancy behind that. Now, again, of course, red being a problem color, it's just going to look oversaturated and you're not going to see the full glory of OLED, but I'm telling you right now, it was a wonderful experience and it looked very, very good. Now, when we look at this particular image again, it's going to be a win for the Q90R because of the rendering of objects to look like three-dimensional objects. Now, I couldn't get an exact measure up. I didn't, rather, get an exact measure up. So you have a bowl here that's not on the Q90R because I didn't get the exact scene here. So just imagine that the bowl's not there, and then you can kind of look at Deku's mother. Even still, the expression's the same, and you can see that, again, it just looks really incredible. I mean, they, they both do a good job, but I think it's that look of the OLED, that three-dimensional depth and punch and pop that I really like. Makes you kind of wonder for a lot of the Sony guys that say that, you know, hey, no matter what, OLED's just going to be flatter and less three-dimensional on LG side of things. It makes you really wonder why they say that, because when you look at this image, this is definitely more three-dimensional than Samsung's top-tier model. Now, when we look at this image, this image shows Deku basically looking identical, in my personal opinion, to the TV next to it. Like, I mean, it was really hard to tell on my end in person, but when you pick out nitpick fine little details, you can see far more texture in the chalkboard behind the students. You can notice Deku's hair is far more green, and there is a far better immersion of shadow casting over Deku's eyes. 
You can also notice that you can see more tonality in the hair of the main student to the far right, and you can see that there are different shades of color in his hair, gradating from like a light grayish color all the way to almost like a warmish gray color. So a lot more than just the flat gray that you're getting on the Q90R and the overall wash bland look. Now, counteractively, the Q90R, of course, has the shadow detail. So I think this whole comparison, so to speak, really comes down to this. Do you like more shadow detail or do you like three dimensionality? Do you like a more washed out image or do you like more vibrancy? Because that's really what it boils down to. The Q90R is going to be the more washed out, more bland, flat image with the most shadow detail with really excellent sharpening. However, if you like three dimensionality, more color, and overall just a look of punch and sting to it, then you're probably going to have to go with the LG E8. Either way, I want to know what you thought was the better TV personally, and let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching the number one brand in honesty. Thank you guys so much for being very supportive. I know I have been really dodgy as of late. I've been in and out of the hospital and there's been a lot of stuff going on with being sick. So I wanna thank all you guys who are showing the love and being quite supportive to me during this time and throughout this whole condition that I have. So thank you guys so much. You guys have been great. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later. That I have.